The story starts, and the first thing that comes into view is the Neo High School building. As we zoom in, we can clearly see these students taking lectures through the window. And among those students, there sits our hero of this story. His name is Chen Jilao, and the man is just casually twirling his pen over his fingers. Despite the way he looks, he is actually an ace in his class, a perfect high school student. With his smarts, the guy is pretty sure that he can easily solve any problem that the world has to throw his way. But his confidence takes a hit when he falls for a girl, who is more of a delinquent than an elegant lady. While this girl is nonchalantly sucking on her lollipop, the teacher is giving her an earful, reminding her that the table is not her personal chill spot for lollipop sucking sessions whenever she pleases. But this girl could not care less and turns to our boy. With a devil-may-care attitude, she thrusts her math book at him, basically telling him to do her damn homework because she is off to play some new game. And of course, the idiot just takes her book without a hint of reluctance on his face. Just as the boy is looking at her with his blushing cheeks, the girl curiously asks if there is something he wanted to say. We can also hear the teacher on a tirade, telling her that either she stops disturbing the members of the studying committee, which includes our boy, of course, or she will face severe consequences. But it seems the girl does not care about what the teacher is ranting about. Meanwhile, our boy becomes anxious before asking her if he can join her in the game. By the way, her name is Kin Zayame. It seems it is time for her to hit the road before she gets into any more trouble. Nevertheless, she turns to him before leaving and flashes a distant smile, mentioning that he can join her since they are already hunting for some experienced people to invite. She also gives him precise instructions on where they can meet in the game at 8.30 at night, and her game tag is Bursting Sweetheart. It seems that school is letting students out a bit early, and our ace of his class is walking down with an umbrella in hand. The reason behind this early dismissal seems to be the bad weather and the fact that a rare thunderstorm is reported, expected to arrive at 8 of the clock tonight. Chen Jileo enters the house with his shoes soaked in rain. After entering, he proceeds to take off his shoes and greets his mom in the process. Upon hearing this, the concerned mother asks why he came back early, to which the boy explains that the school let them out early due to the weather conditions. Finally, his mother graces the scene with her presence, and this lady actually looks smoking cute and unusually young to be a mother for someone like our idiot. In any case, with a charming smile she tells him to rest well until she prepares the dinner. Chen Jilao slides his hands into his hoodie pockets and casually asks his mom if any deliveries showed up today. She nods, confirming there is a parcel in the hallway for him. He takes his sweet time before finally glancing around and spotting a package on the floor with Cosmos boldly printed on it. With a grin, he happily snatches it up before bounding up the stairs to his room. It seems there is some kind of game in this package. And surprisingly enough, this lady is probably the last woman on the planet who is actually encouraging his son to play fucking video games for fun. The boy silently ascends the stairs without giving her any response, making faint tapping noises with each step. The lady also reminds him to come downstairs for dinner. She is actually now quite curious to see her son's rather unusual eagerness for this game, which leads her to think if he is perhaps looking forward to playing it with some girl. Just as the thunderstorm is getting violent with each passing moment, we see that Chen Jilao has finally unboxed his long-awaited game. Apparently, the game he ordered is called Cosmos, which is currently the most popular immersive VR online game ever created. And the helmet he has in his hand can provide neural sensing to achieve a realistic in-game experience. Although he is just about to start playing this game, the lollipop-sucking lady, who is called Zayame of course, has been playing for a while now, making her a better player than our boy. But still, he is not nervous about it in the slightest, he is confident that it would not take him long enough before he gets to her level as well. Suddenly, a notification pops up on his phone. He quickly checks it, only to see Zayame urging him to get online as soon as possible because she has been waiting for him. Chen Jilao wastes no time. He plugs in the power supply and immediately dons the helmet. The excitement is palpable, and he cannot afford to waste any more time before embarking on what feels like a first date with his crush. Finally, his mind connects with the device, leaving him plunging into this seemingly bottomless digital world. After a few moments, he takes his first step into the virtual realm. Just as he steadies himself after his almost flawless landing, some triumphant music kicks in along with the game's logo flashing before him. The brightness is a bit much though, almost challenging Chen Jilao's eyes, making it tough to fully open them. And it seems all of this radiance is coming from this massive system window displayed right in front of him, thanking him for purchasing Cosmos. He could almost hear the game giving him a virtual high-five for stepping into its immersive world. Of course, he is pretty stoked to see such a warm welcome given by this game upon arrival. But before he can even wrap his head around it, a system window appears out of nowhere, revealing that Cosmos is actually a survival game. It is all about myths and legends from around the world, creating this wild mix of danger, treasures, and miracles. With the game officially kicking off, it asks him to pick his occupation before diving in. Now, there are a bunch of options staring back at him, and boy, is he feeling confused. 
In the end, he settles on being a healer. After all, Zayame mentioned needing experienced folks for the party, so why not be the support she is looking for? Right after clicking on the option, boom, another window pops up, reminding him about the free fashion items he snagged with his purchase of Cosmos. Chen Jilao decides to go for something a bit more formal. I mean, it is his first date with a girl, and he is not about to show up looking like a total schlub. With a tap of the button, he gets a magical makeover. Shirt, coat, tie, all neatly in place. No rolled up sleeves here. And just like that, my guy is officially ready to impress on his first date. As Jilao eagerly stares at the loading screen, the news anchor's voice filters through, reporting about the weather. The thunderstorm in the city has reached status red, and everyone's being urged to turn off household appliances to prevent accidents. Meanwhile, we take a peek outside the city, and sure enough, the storm has arrived. Conveniently enough, the first bolt of this thunderstorm is heading straight for our boy's house. I mean, this is a transmigration story, and that lightning bolt is serving the role of truck coon. Just as expected, the lightning strikes the targeted house, and the power supply of Jaleo's Cosmos VR headset starts to short-circuit because of the overload. Electricity surges toward the helmet. Just when Jaleo thought his first date was inevitable with the love of his life, fate pulls a fast one and gives him the shock of a lifetime. He can feel the lightning surging through his body, making it spasm out of control. There is also this cage-like thing that I can't identify. But hey, it is here, and it might be important later in the plot. As the electricity intensifies in the room, the guy starts to float above in the air. At one point, his room becomes so bright that the light can be seen from miles away, leaking out from his window. Finally, the electricity that once invaded his room has dispersed, and it seems this one incident put the entire city into a power outage, leaving nothing but darkness all over the district. The helmet Jalea once wore falls flat on the ground, smoke still billowing from it. Suddenly, the sound of the door opening fills the room. Jalea's mother has arrived, asking him to go and check the reason behind the abrupt power outage. But as she steps further into the room, her son is nowhere to be seen, and the VR helmet lies abandoned on the bed. The scene then cuts to a group of menacing monsters, armed to the teeth, surrounding a beautiful young lady. Her broken sword lies beside her on the ground, a clear sign that she is in trouble. With no other options left, she makes sure to use her trump card before it is too late, and starts shouting for help. Suddenly, a blinding flash of intense light grabs everyone's attention. There is a massive electrical explosion nearby, and out steps our boy, sporting his new look. He stands tall, like a superhero emerging from the heavens, while the monsters in the background succumb to this fire. It does not take the girl long to realize that this is Jalao. The boy gives her support to stand up and apologizes in the meantime for being late, but assures her that it is already over now so she can rest in ease. They lean closer to each other, and the atmosphere fills with a sweet romantic fragrance. The lady calls him her superhero, and leans further closer to his lips. And after that, the only thing we could hear were slurp sounds. While we see this long-ass tongue giving tingles to his lips, we can clearly hear Jaleo embarrassingly telling Zayame to slow down. But it seems that this idiot's first date might not be as straightforward as it seems, because there is a gecko right above his chest that was giving him sweet and slippery smooches all over his lips. That's when reality grips him, and he frantically wakes up, calling out to his supposed girlfriend. Of course, after realizing he is just smack dab in the middle of a desert, and he just ended up sharing his first kiss with a gecko, his disappointment is beyond measure, and his day is ruined. But the love business is for later, right now, he is more concerned about where he is and what just happened. He wonders if this VR headset is actually that immersive and realistic. He clearly remembers his entire body feeling as if it is being electrocuted, but he did not feel any pain whatsoever. He finally stands up on his feet and takes a curious glance in front of him, which leaves the guy momentarily confused. But looking at this endless sea of sand, he now has no doubt that he is in the game already. He then starts walking in one direction in this scorching heat. The guy is sweating profusely due to this heat, leaving him wondering if this VR is actually supposed to be this realistic. Although the first transmission should have brought him to the novice village, looking at this desolate place, it is clear that he is not summoned there where he was supposed to be. To seek answers to all these daunting questions, he decides to locate Zayame first. He begins scanning his surroundings to find the player named Bursting Sweetheart, and many moments pass with Jalao just standing there under this unbearable heat with no response from the system. Finally, the system responds, but it is not the news Jalao was hoping for, because there is no player found with that username in the database. Despite being sure he has the correct name, he is left scratching his head, wondering what is going on. Feeling like he is being cooked alive in the relentless heat, Jalao knows he cannot just stand there. With determination, he sets off towards the novice village, hoping to find his crush. Walking for what feels like miles, the sun beating down mercilessly, he soon finds himself out of breath. Pausing for a moment to gather his bearings, Jalao checks the cosmos map, but to his bewilderment, the village he is looking for is nowhere in sight. 
feeling a sense of unease creeping over him. He cannot shake the feeling that something's not quite right. Where did he just get summoned to? It is a question that is starting to weigh heavily on his mind as he stands there, scanning the barren landscape around him. After making multiple attempts to connect with customer service, Jilao is met with the frustrating response that he is in an out-of-service area. Things are spiraling out of control for him, especially with the fact that the body loses so much sweat in this scorching weather, and it is only a matter of time before dehydration sets in. Scratch that. He does not care about any cute ladies or virtual adventures anymore. All he wants is to get home safe and sound. He opens his system window to log out from the game, intending to meet Sayame in person and explain everything to her. But as soon as he hits the logout button, his request is denied. His eyes nearly pop out of his sockets at this bizarre sight. Relentlessly pressing the logout button, each attempt only brings the same unfortunate message. Jilao feels like he has become the cosmic joke's punchline at this point, which is not even remotely funny. In spite of everything, he keeps on pressing the logout button in hopes to make his way out, but each time he presses the button, he is just met with the same response. Suddenly, he is hit by something by the system he had never hoped for. A mission is laid out before him, and the task at hand is simply to stay alive. Jilao is beyond pissed at this point. All he wanted was to play a damn game with the woman he loved. But instead, he is trapped here. In frustration, he punches the sand on the ground and then collapses back onto the ground. There is no way to log out, and no way to get in touch with anyone. He is completely alone, surrounded by these crawling creatures. The thought of being trapped here forever starts to gnaw at him, and it is not a pleasant feeling to say the least. Eight hours have passed since his arrival in this game, and he is still walking aimlessly. Although, he has finally made peace with his mind that he is stuck here and cannot log out of the game in a normal way. Unfortunately, he has found out in a rather hard way that the mechanism of the game is the same as that in the real world, and nausea and dizziness caused by the warm temperature and dehydration are actually very realistic. He fears that if he goes on like this a little longer, the only thing waiting for him is death. He has to find water if he intends to survive in this desert. It seems this guy is a man of culture as well because he has also watched Bear Grylls' survival shows in the past, where he clearly remembers that the kind of stones he just picked only appear near the springs. Seeing these stones here only makes sense if there is water nearby, and this is a hope he just found that gives him a little more courage to walk forward to find the water. It seems the guy is not the only one hunting for something to survive, because there is this creature, probably a hyena, following the smell of his footsteps. Even the drool has started to escape this creature's disgusting mouth at the delicious sight of our boy. After walking for what feels like an eternity, he leans over a rock for a moment of respite. His physical situation is worse than ever before, but he is putting hope into the assumption he made about those stones and finding water. It seems his efforts actually bore fruit, because in front of him, inside this tunnel, there is this little jar of water that looks as if it is conveniently placed there, ready to be found. Looking more worn out than a sock left out in the rain, Jilao wastes no time as he spots the precious water. With a desperate lunge, he dives headfirst into the rock jar, gulping down the water with gusto, each gulp echoing through the tunnel. Never in his wildest dreams did he imagine that a simple sip of water would become his ultimate craving. But in this moment, as he quenches his thirst, it is the most precious thing in the world to him. Outside the tunnel, we see that pesky creature has also managed to find its way, perched menacingly on a hill with a glint of trouble in its eyes. After quenching his thirst, Jilao collapses onto the ground, feeling a sense of relief wash over him, while the system window hovers above his head. But even in this moment of respite, he cannot shake off his worries. Sure, he has solved one problem by finding water, but the bigger issue of being trapped here still hangs over him. Glancing at the system window, Jilao realizes that since this is just a game, there has got to be a clue somewhere on how to escape this desert. With that in mind, he takes a look at the map and realizes it only shows the explored areas, and the rest remains a mystery. Then, he checks out his own stats, which are definitely nothing to brag about since he is just a newbie in this game. There is also a noteworthy thing mentioned, a player's skills can be obtained by meeting level requirements or triggering specific conditions. After reading this, he lets out a sigh of disappointment. The fact that his overall stats are low and he lacks any attack skills is troubling. He does not even know how to activate the self-triggering skill. If a monster were to attack him, he fears he would be a goner. He also does not forget to take a look at his inventory, where we can see he has a sword, a glove, merbroman, and a bandage, but these items will only be available if he opens this novice pack. He proceeds to open it and summons out the gloves and the sword from his inventory. The objects he summoned fall to the ground, leaving him curious as to why in the world a sword would be considered initial equipment for a healer. But he is not complaining either way. After all, he is just a nobody in this desert with zero skills, so having a weapon to carry in case of emergency would not hurt. Out of the blue, he takes his stance and pulls his sword out of the scabbard and swings it fast enough that left's trail of silhouette behind with a single swing. 
he takes his footing on the ground, grabs his sword firmly and takes a yet another formidable offensive stance. He draws in a fresh breath, feeling the adrenaline coursing through his veins. With a swift twirl over his feet, he channels all his focus and determination into a single strike. And just like that, with a resounding clang, the thick rock is cut in half, falling away like a sliced cucumber. After this little show, he come to know that this sword's hardness and toughness definitely can't be compared to the real world. Also, a little notification pops up, mentioning that the durability of the sword has gone down by 1%. Needless to say, it only indicates that everything in the game is visualized. Suddenly, his stomach growls loudly, a clear sign that he needs to find some food soon. Without any helpful information at hand, he decides he will have to scavenge for sustenance on his own if he wants to keep going. But just as he is about to set off, a peculiar noise catches his attention from behind. He turns his head over his right shoulder, wondering aloud what possibly caused its sound. So, to clarify, he walks over to the direction from where the sound came from to locate the source of it. Just as he ventures deeper inside, he realizes that the cave is actually a lot bigger than he had imagined. It seems like this is just the first of many surprises about to come, because as he strides forward carefully, he accidentally kicks a bone. Needless to say, Jaleo is terrified to see bones of all things here, but when he turns his head, he's met with the sight of an entire stash of them. Of course, he's curious as to who would be the artist behind this masterpiece. He grabs a bone for investigation, and upon closer inspection, he sees those teeth marks deeply engraved into it. Given his extraordinary intellect, he could actually remember seeing similar teeth marks in his school textbooks. And the moment he figures out what animal they belong to, he starts sweating profusely. He immediately turns around to get out of there as soon as possible. But dang, it is too late. That creature is already on the move, and Jaleo is practically face to face with its gaping mouth. Of course, the boy is freaking out, but he dives to the ground like a ninja just before the hound tries to take a bite. He quickly hops back up on his feet, ready to bolt. We finally learn that this hound is actually a desert wolf, sitting comfortably at level 5. It is a tough one, built sturdy, and capable of covering 15 kilometers on a single high-speed sprint, even in high temperatures. And when it is on the hunt, it can really rev up, hitting speeds of up to 65 kilometers per hour. That is some serious speed, making it a real challenge to outrun for our boy. And as for the offensive, it has a bite force of 200 kilograms. Apparently, its soft abdomen is the only weakness this creature has. There is also a specific skill this monster has. If there is a level difference of 3, the opponent will suffer a crushing effect causing 200% damage. We see blood trickling down on the ground, and his arm seems to be severely injured, which clearly means that Jalao was not fortunate enough to wriggle out of those jaws without taking a hit. After reading those stats about this sucker, he knows for a fact that he is screwed. I mean, it is pretty obvious this creature's got lightning-fast reflexes, giving our boy zero chance to attack. And forget about trying to outrun this wolf, because that's not even on the menu of options. So, it is a showdown, where our hero's only option is that trusty sword of his. It is do or die time. The stage is set, and their clash is inevitable. But to witness the outcome of this showdown, I am afraid you will have to hold your breath and wait eagerly for the next episode. If you guys have seen my community post, you would know that I have partnered up with Webcomics app to bring you exclusive content from their platform. I am incredibly thrilled for this partnership, because it means I can now bring you guys tons of exclusive content you may have never seen before, and give you full coverage of it all the way to its latest and upcoming chapters. To know more about them, check out the video description in the pinned comment below. Until next time.